first of all, thank you to everyone who is joining us today. Um, we are really excited about uh, this virtual bus tour and uh, our bill, our op this opportunity to uh, create a little bit more um, awareness around uh, the challenges that we're facing right now, but also some solutions in terms of workforce development and education. So um, I'm Lieutenant Governor Jacqueline Coleman, and my other hat is Secretary of Education and Workforce Development. And so I'm very grateful uh, to, to be working side by side with Governor Bashir. Um, an education first administration that is committed to uh, helping uh, uh, basically rebuild our workforce uh, and build back stronger uh, as we come out of this pandemic. So uh, it was about uh, last weekend that we marked the one year anniversary of the very first COVID case that was diagnosed here in Kentucky. And so we're looking back now on a year of lessons learned in many ways. Um, I always say that this pandemic has created its own set of challenges, but the thing that I keep coming back to is that the pandemic has also exacerbated issues that we have known about for years. Uh, the one good thing that has come out of that is that it has given us the sense of urgency we need uh, to take these challenges on. And so it's not going to surprise any of you when I tell you that this virus has had a huge impact on our workforce, especially when it comes to women and minorities. Um, and so in order for us to move forward as a state, we have to address these problems, the new ones and the old ones alike, and we have to hit them head on. And so for those who have suffered inequities for generations, we can't afford not to. And so the goal of the Education and Workforce Development Cabinet is to give Kentuckians uh, the tools necessary to build thriving and healthy families and communities. That's what we're all about, ensuring that we have a world-class public education system uh, working uh, to make sure that we have a highly skilled workforce is absolutely key to our mission. And these two pillars, uh, education and workforce development, are what will provide the foundation for stronger local economies and stronger statewide economies because they go hand in hand. Uh, an educated workforce is a prepared workforce, and a prepared workforce is one that is ready for the jobs of the future. And we want to make sure that Kentucky doesn't miss out on any opportunities uh, as our economy continues to change and grow. So in EWDC, we provide service to Kentuckians in, in what we call cradle to career. Um, and along that continuum, there are gaps in educational attainment, whether it means that not every child in Kentucky has access to pre-K or every family in Kentucky has access to early childhood education. Um, and then the transitions from elementary to middle, middle, middle to high, high school to whatever post-secondary looks like for our students, um, and then from that post-secondary institution to the workforce. And this is why we are committed uh, to continued education and, and job training through what we refer to as the four E's of economic development and, and workforce de development. And that's expansion, exposure, experience, and expertise. And so first, I just mentioned it, we have got to work towards expanding early childhood education in Kentucky. This is not only an education issue, it is a workforce issue, one that many families uh, are struggling with. Um, in middle school, we want to make sure that our students have exposure to those community career options and all of those industries that exist right in their own backyard. In high school, we want our students to um, have real world workforce experiences, uh, go out and do internships and job shadowing um, and, and, and mentorships and things of that nature. And then in their post-secondary life, we wanna make sure that Kentuckians have expertise in whatever field they've chosen to pursue. So from the time that Kentuckians enter the education system uh, to the time that they enter the workforce, we want everyone to understand what, what an integral part they play in every community's economic development. And we wanna also make sure that they have opportunities and the support that is needed to thrive, uh, not just today, but for tomorrow as well. And so we're doing this virtual bus tour to make sure that our communities, and especially our communities in rural Kentucky, know what is available to them through the Education and Workforce Development Cabinet. So often we find out that we have all of these great programs and initiatives but it only helps if you know about it. And so knowledge is power. And that's why we're here today to partner with our local communities to help um, build that knowledge about 
what we're um, able to offer Kentuckians. Uh, a perfect example of that is something that um, you'll hear a lot about, which is the Better Kentucky Promise. Uh, that is a commitment for last dollar in funding uh, to uh, help Kentuckians to pursue an associate's degree without debt. And the governor has budgeted for that. It's going to allow 6,300 Kentuckians to work towards an associate's degree, some sort of industry certification, and it's not going to, to put them in, in piles of debt uh, as, as so often happens. And so um, that's just one example of the opportunities that we want to make sure that everybody's aware of. Uh, this virtual bus tour is part of an initiative throughout the Bashir Coleman administration to uh, adapt to the changing landscape that is in the field of education, that is in job training, that is in the workforce because of the COVID-19 pandemic. We are starting to transition out of the pandemic with uh, all of the vaccinations that are taking place. We're not out of it yet, but we're getting there. And we want to make sure that when we do, that Kentuckians, no matter their zip code, are part of this conversation. To the exact reason that we're so committed to improving broadband services ar around the Commonwealth as well. So the programs that you will hear about today are available in every corner of the Commonwealth. It doesn't matter if you're in Pikeville, Paducah, Maysville, Monticello. Uh, rural economic development is, my, is a top priority of mine, but it's also a top priority of this cabinet and this administration. And so uh, I wanna close, close out this welcome by saying thank you to all of our local partners I know that you have done a tremendous amount of work uh, to get us here today and to make today a success. And so uh, without you, it would not be possible for us to build the workforce and the economy of the future. And so thank you for your partnership. And we look forward to continuing to build that partnership um, along the way. Uh, with that said, I'm going to stop talking and turn it over to Western Kentucky's favorite son, uh, that many of you know, he uh, is, has been a legislator, uh, and now he is serving as the executive director in the governor's office of ag policy. And so I'm going to, to turn it over to a man who needs no introduction, Mr. Dorsey Ridley. Well, thank you. Am I on mute? Let me, thought I was. You're good. Am I good? good. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Lieutenant Governor, thank you so much. What a nice introduction. And uh, for those of you uh, who do not know me. I'm from Henderson. I grew up uh, along the Ohio River, uh, and uh, you know we're we're down in far west Kentucky. And really, we all wish we could be making a real bus tour. Come and see you all. You see us. We see you. Shake hands. Well, socially distance, uh, bump fists or whatever. But we just want to say uh, thank you for being on on with us today, and and uh, and. Uh, we just wish we could be with you. Um, I want to begin by thanking the Education and Workforce Development Cabinet, the organizers, and all of uh, you participating today for prioritizing everyone's health and hosting this vital, uh, a virtual, excuse me, bus tour. Um, this has been a tough year for most, uh, we'll recall, it, but right now we're uh, for, for many reasons, we've got to be very, very optimistic. The light at the end of the dark tunnel is getting brighter by the minute. We're administering the safe and effective COVID-19 vaccines faster each week, and uh, we'll sprint out of this pandemic later this year. Until everyone can be vaccinated, we need everyone to be patient and vigilant, continue to mask up and maintain social distance, Avoid the crowds and practice the good hygiene by washing your hands regularly and make a plan to get a vaccine. Uh, it's really a shot of hope when, you, uh, when it comes your turn. While this year is different and the challenges brought forth by this pandemic were unexpected, one thing that has never changed, this administration puts education first. Education is how we prepare our people to be leaders in the post COVID economy. It's how we begin the hard work to redress historic inequities. Education is central to how we will build a better Kentucky we all want. Education is also how we ensure Kentucky's workforce uh, is up to the task of taking on the jobs of the future. And a lot of those jobs, we don't even know what they are yet. 
Governor Bashir and Lieutenant Governor Coleman have been working hard to represent your interest to support education and workforce development through a variety of programs and incentives, many administered by the EWDC. In Governor Bashir's budget, he proposed historic investments in education at a time when college training is absolutely necessary for our workforce and our economy to move forward. This budget pledges an additional $17 million in funding for post-secondary institution, a 2% increase in the general fund investment. We also have uh, proposed a $50 million for a much needed asset preservations project and nearly a $20 million in additional funding to help campuses cover pension obligations. In addition, the budget can help create the Better Kentucky Promise, a new program that will, will expand the Work Ready Kentucky Scholarship to provide last dollar assistance for nearly 6,300 Kentuckians to complete an associate degree or certificate. Lieutenant Governor's already kind of shared this with you. One reason we're looking forward to expand Work Ready is because we are so proud of what the, that scholarship already accomplished. The program helps cover up to 60 hours of tuition for anyone who has not yet, yet earned an associate degree. And in many instances, the assistance is completely free. Let me repeat that. It's completely free in many instances. Adults can enroll in a wide variety of high demand technical programs, including healthcare, manufacturing, business, IT, construction, skilled trades, transportation, and logistics with more than 350 courses currently available. Overall, the scholarship has served 5,600 students and provided more than $16 million in scholarships for adult learners around the state since its launch in 2017. College affordability is a priority for us. We must ensure that every Kentuckian has access to educational opportunities that lead to a sustainable and successful career, an active and meaningful role in their community, a financially stable household, and the highest quality of life that is possible. We need to achieve these goals without uh, saddling our students with decades of debt. We believe that it's a moral imper imperative and we want to thank our campuses and the Kentucky Council on Post-Secondary Education for its commitment to that goal. This past summer, the CPE and our public universities held strong to their values and preserved college affordability with the smallest average tuition increase in decades. This allowed residents, undergraduate students to enter the 2020-2021 academic year with an average tuition increase of only 0.7, very low. Kentucky's 60 by 30 goal seeks to raise the percentage of working age Kentuckians with a high quality post-secondary degree or certificate to 60% by, of Kentuckians by the year 2030. And I can think of few investments that have a better rate of return than education. I can think of no greater level of uh, lever to re-energize our workforce and position our economy for a robust and equitable recovery than education. And I can think of no greater opportunity to break the cycles of intergenerational poverty, poverty and provide a path to economic resiliency for all Kentuckians. The latest research from the CPE shows that a graduate with a bachelor's degree now earns close to $1 million more in a lifetime than a high school graduate does. And graduates with an associate's degree earn around $400,000 more. In addition, those with a college education experience a greater appreciation for diversity of our communities and lower rates of incarceration and substance use disorder. They are more likely to teach the value of education to their children. 
These are the values that all of us embody and the values that will lead the Commonwealth to a bright future and help build a better Kentucky that we all want. Lieutenant Governor, I appreciate this opportunity to, uh, to have some remarks and uh, thank you and thank all of you who are here for this virtual bus tour. Thank you, Dorsey. This is Barry Pat Regan, Deputy Secretary of Workforce and Education. And um, welcome to everyone. A few housekeeping items today. We do have everyone on mute, uh, but we are recording these sessions. There are a lot of, there's a lot of information that will be coming um, and we will be posting that on our cabinet website and also the local workforce board uh, will have it on their website as well. If you have any questions during the presentation, you can enter them in, into the chat feature and we will uh, circle back at the end and answer any questions you might have. So I'm gonna touch on uh, a couple of different agencies in our cabinet. Uh, the cabinet of education and workforce development has 13 uh, different agencies, and I'm not gonna go through those all today, but I, I do want you to know that we have these 13 in our cabinet and responsible for all of those. I'm, the first stop we're gonna to make today is the Office of Voc Rehab. And this is the agency that is, uh, specializes in helping Kentuckians with disabilities to become economically self-sufficient and independent. And we work with both employees and employers uh, in, in this arena. And if you have any questions here, you can uh, click on OVR to bring you to different programs and uh, grants that we offer. Currently today, we are working uh, vigorously on the RETAIN grant, and that is retaining em uh, employment and uh, talent after somewhat there is an injury or illness. And so there, there are a lot of programs in the RETAIN grant uh, so you can uh, click on retain at uky.gov for all of those uh, programs that are available to you. The second agency is our adult education agency. And as the Lieutenant Ga Governor mentioned, uh, the different gaps that we have seen as we've been going through this pandemic. This is the one that I think we can put a lot of focus and energy on. Um, there are approximately 350,000 uh, working age Kentuckians who do not have a high school diploma or certificate. And 62% of the Kentucky's jobs will require some level of post-secondary education or high school diploma. So this is an area that we can really go after we offer the free GED program uh, in this agency, but we also um, have the ability to break down barriers that we find out in the community that, um, you know, that don't allow people to go to take the GED test taking or a barrier to maybe they didn't have a good experience in high school and going back into the classroom isn't something that they want to do. So we, we really have to think about how we offer these programs in, in the adult education arena and what we can do to break down barriers so more people can take advantage of these. We also have the VETS program, Employment Assistance. Um, this is located in our labor department. Uh, but I did want to mention this, and if you have any questions, we can certainly uh, connect you with the appropriate people in our labor department. But there are so many programs uh, um, that are available to our veterans. Um, so I, I urge you to take a look at these and see if you can fit them either into an employment process um, or employees who want to take advantage of those programs as well. We also have a lot of uh, different partnerships with our vets. Uh, we have the Homeless Veterans uh, Program. We have the Kentucky Department of Veterans Affairs. 
Uh, we have the Kentucky Veterans Accelerated Learning for Licensed Occupation. So there are a lot of programs that are available to vets for both employees and for employers. Um, and with that, I'm gonna turn it back to the Lieutenant Governor to talk about the Work Ready Scholarship. Thank you so much, uh, Deputy Secretary Regan. Uh, there, uh, as, as uh, many of you folks know, that there are so many jobs in Kentucky that go unfilled every year, uh, simply because workers don't have the training that employers need. Um, the, the good news about that is, that doesn't always mean that our workers need to have a four-year college degree to get a great job, uh, just one that, uh, one that might be able to provide uh, college credit. That college credit might lead to a better paying job or to an industry certification, uh, or could even be used to start an associate's degree. And we know that five years after graduating, with an associate's degree, our students in the trades here in Kentucky are averaging a salary of, of over $51,000 a year. So that's why I'm excited to talk to you today to promote the Work Ready Scholarship. It provides free tuition in over 350 courses. And those, those courses are available both online and on campus in person. And the, the way that it's designed is to help Kentuckians get in, get out and get to work quickly. Uh, a few notes about the scholarship. It is not uh, income-based and it does not have requirements for essays or GPA. So even if you aren't looking for a new job, this program allows you to create opportunities at your current job. So if uh, getting an industry certification will elevate you um, in your current place of employment, uh, that's still something that you could consider moving forward with. So um, I wanna encourage you to take advantage of it. It's, it's a quick way uh, to work towards uh, better job training and a better job. And you can do it in as little as one class in some cases. So that number is 833-711-WRKS, um, or you can go to workreadykentucky.com. And speaking of post-secondary uh, educational opportunities, uh, I want to make sure to make everybody aware of the FAFSA. And I joke that my team makes me say FAFSA as many times as they can because I can't say it. So just bear with me. Uh, but we know that as we work towards recovering uh, from this pandemic, higher education is going to play such a critical role. Um, it's going to Work, help us work towards um, adults gaining new employability skills or preparing students for a completely new generation of jobs. What we keep hearing is uh, the automation that we thought was 10 years away now thanks to the pandemic is five years away. And so we've got to prepare Kentuckians for jobs of the future. And in doing that, we want to make sure we don't leave any dollars on the table. Uh, and so these benefits can start uh, by filling out the FAFSA form. Uh, and it allows thousands of students in Kentucky every year to secure the financial resources that they need for success. And that looks different for different people. So first of all, FAFSA is short for the Free Application for uh, Federal Student Aid. And it's required to be completed uh, to know whether you are eligible for a federal Pell Grant or for student loans. Uh, we know a couple things. One is that uh, the students that complete the form are far more likely to enroll in college and the folks who receive aid are more likely to stay in college. Uh, so uh, back to what I said earlier about the pandemic creating a new set of challenges for us, uh, obviously our school buildings have been closed. And so that's created an obstacle uh, as some of our students have lost touch with, with the guidance counselors who would typically be walking them through this financial aid process. Um, we have families that don't have reliable internet access, and so they have struggled to complete the form as well. And so here's the, here's the scary trajectory that we're looking at. Um, if there, there's been a significant decrease in applications for FAFSA. So that means that by the numbers I just gave you, we could also be looking at a downturn in the number of students who are enrolled in higher education this fall. Uh, and so right now, it is absolutely critical for our students to know why and how to complete their FAFSA. And so you'll see the requirements on the screen. 
Uh, but I can tell you that step one is the most important, and that is creating the FSA ID. And you can do that at fsaid.ed.gov. And once you uh, create that ID and provide that information to get set up, uh, you will need to make sure that you check your email regularly because there are lots of updates that come about the financial aid process that will be really helpful in, in moving you along. So um, that's kind of the short version of it. But for uh, even more information, you can call or text the number that you see here on the screen, or you can visit kia.com, which is K-H-E-A-A.com to find an outreach counselor to support you. So um those are just a couple of, of opportunities that um, we want folks to take advantage of in, in uh, their post-secondary work and education. Uh, and so I will turn it back over to Depu Deputy Secretary Regan to continue on with even more information and opportunities for you to share. Okay, thanks, Lieutenant Governor. The next agency we want to stop at is our uh, Kentucky Commission on Proprietary Education. This is the agency that licensed all the for-profit schools, uh, both career and technical schools. It's another pathway for um, individuals who wanna continue their education, go into a new field. We have CLD schools, nursing schools, um, just a, a coding schools, IT. So there's a wide range of different uh, opportunities through our Commission on Proprietary Education. And the last stop is our uh, Office of Employer and Apprenticeship Services. And we refer to this as the workforce navigation and connecting the dots for employers and employees through recruitment, upskilling, and incentives. There are so many opportunities within the Employer and Apprenticeship uh, Agency that are available to both employers and employees. One that I wanna highlight is the work opportunity tax credit. I think this is something um, that employers aren't aware of that can be used. Um, so I would urge you to uh, take a look at those opportunities and see if something like that would work for you. The other area is our uh, trained apprenticeship program. And this provides uh, businesses with uh, retention and recruitment for over 1,200 occupations that cover traditional skilled trade, but also apprenticeships in healthcare, IT, and even uh, a whiskey uh, specialist. Um, and this is the area where I think, um, as well as adult ed, but in our apprenticeship to think about new uh, apprenticeships that might be coming along for the, for the jobs that are coming in the future, whether that's you know, through the aerospace industry, whether that's through green jobs. I um, urge everyone to kind of think out of the box um, on where we can make an impact for the state of Kentucky. And, as, and I say that just because as difficult um, as this pandemic has been, this also gives us an opportunity to really transform um, people's lives, transform the way we think um, about conducting business and be able to bring the workforce back and build a better Kentucky as we move out of this pandemic. So I'm gonna turn this over to uh, John Lyons, who's our executive director of the Workforce Innovation Board. Good, after, good afternoon, everyone. This is John Lyons. I'm currently serving as the executive director of the KWIB. And the, the main goal of the KWIB is to create a workforce development system that's value-driven for the employers that also aligns education with industry demands. We prepare Kentuckians for the future of work and drive economic development in the state of Kentucky. The way, the way a great deal of this work is accomplished is through our local workforce development areas. As you can see from the slide on the screen now, our state is broken down into 10, 10 local workforce development areas, um, two of which are being highlighted in our, in our uh, virtual bus tour today. In just a moment, we're going to have a, a couple of representatives from, from our Western Kentucky and Green River areas talk to you about um, um, opportunities, jobs, programs, that are, that are available in your local area that you can take advantage of to either become re-engaged with the workforce or to skill up in your current profession. 
First, I'd like to introduce Dennis, Court Dennis Courtney with the Western Kentucky Workforce Development Area. Dennis, it's all yours. I think we've got him on mute. Now? There we go. I'm sorry, Dennis. We had you on mute. Can you, we can hear you. Course? Yep. Sorry. <laughs> not, a, not a problem. Um, I was just saying that, uh, first off, I want to apologize from the glare that's coming off the top of my head. I was in court this morning uh, arguing a motion in front of a judge, and my fellow lawyer told me that it was blinding. Um, <laughs> but um, it's uh, just a product of white hair, what I have left, and baldness. Um, so, Sorry about that. Please feel free to wear sunglasses. Um, the West Kentucky Workforce Board serves the 17 westernmost counties of Kentucky, stretching from the western coal fields, Muhlenberg County, to the Mississippi River. We call those typically the, the river counties. It goes from coal to cotton. With this description is highlighted, the demand sectors from which our basis of employment growth, uh, a form of uh, a base, basis of our employment growth, manufacturing, healthcare, transportation, agriculture, and business services. We also have a, a specialty area uh, as a, in the maritime industry, uh, having so many rivers in, uh, in the uh, West Kentucky area. And uh, the chemical industry, which is pretty unique to uh, Calvert City in Marshall County and the limestone quarries. Uh, we see numerous job openings that are shared by our regional businesses through the two business service teams in Paducah and Hopkinsville. Openings are listed on the board's website, on social media, and on media postings. We have two comprehensive care centers in our local workforce area uh, areas. Uh, one's in Hopkinsville, one's in Paducah. The services from these or from the various slides discussed this afternoon represent many of the partner agencies that join us in the career centers. We are providing those services virtually during the COVID, pand uh, during the, uh, COVID pandemic um, with uh, uh, contact phone numbers for our job coaches posted on our website. One of our greatest assets in the West, uh, in the West is the Fort Campbell military installation. This facility injects approximately 400 to 500 individuals a month into our labor market. Our board currently has a joint proposal with our sister workforce board in Clarksville, Tennessee. As y'all may know, the headquarters is actually in Kentucky, but the great bulk of the post is in Tennessee and a lot of service members I live in Tennessee because there's no state income tax. Um, <clears throat> but the purpose of the, uh, of the joint proposal will be to transition soldiers and their spouses and obtain jobs and training uh, to meet the needs of employers in our area. This is a unique relationship with a career center developed just off base. We're very, we're very fortunate to have the resources of our three community and technical colleges, one in Paducah, one in Madisonville and one in Hopkinsville. We also have a four-year university, Murray State University, which also offers graduate programs. Over the last few years, we have placed greater emphasis on employment re-entry efforts with second chance employers to bring individuals back into our workforce. Unfortunately, we have had some challenges with major employers closing their doors, leaving behind dislocated workers. We took those opportunities to maintain a large and prepared workforce that we could market through our local economic development professionals. These opportunities to the dislocated workers created new jobs and supported local economies. We currently have a direct United States Department of Labor grant to assist with the Briggs and Stratton layoff in Murray through a specialty center that's on the Murray State University campus. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dennis. We appreciate you sharing with us all the great opportunities that you have in Western Kentucky. I'd like to turn things over to uh, Matt Bartlett 
who will be talking to us about, uh, about some opportunities and programs in the Green River area. Thank you so much for allowing me to speak today. Um, I know that uh, the Kentucky Career Centers are currently closed, but we are operating virtually. We're doing that very well. Um, we're doing that by phone and by uh, web platforms such as Zoom and WebEx. But we have found um, that in some cases, this has actually worked better um, to assist people so that way they don't have to drive to an access point uh, or a hub to, to receive services. Most of the services that we have are listed on our website at kccgreenriver.com. And uh, we do provide um, individual career counseling, career coaching. Um, we provide LinkedIn learning classes online, trade our work assessments, anything that we can do to assist someone in transitioning to uh, better employment or possibly training. So we do offer uh, training through our WIOA funds, adult funds, dissipated worker funds, and uh, out school youth funds. So the job openings that we have right now, we currently have a job uh, fair going on right now. It's an in-person fair in Henderson, Henderson Community College. We've hosted that uh, in partnership with them and with Henderson Economic uh, Development. And that's something that we're doing by appointment only. So people are able to log online, schedule an appointment. There are currently 19 employers there today. And from touch and base with them about an hour ago, they've seen a really good turnout. So we are, we are still helping as many employers as we can uh, to, uh, to try to find those or, or try to place those people in jobs. One thing that we are focused on is the National Disability Worker Grant in our area that was awarded to us in July. We focus on two different areas. One is humanitarian aid, uh, which we match people up to either nonprofit, nonprofits or for-profit uh, organizations in our area to assist with COVID-19. So it could be you know, sanitation positions, it could be um, assisting with uh, a shelter. So we currently have 64, as of July, we've had 64 people go through that program um, for the humanitarian aid. As far as the training portion, we've had 18 go through that. We partner with Owensboro Community College here in Davis County and Henderson Community College in Henderson. And uh, we provide short-term training programs, uh, credentials with, with that. And then we also partner with employers for on-the-job training programs. And that's where we pay up to 50% of wages for up to six months in order to uh, find someone suitable employment. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Matt. And, and, and I know that we've shared a lot with, with everyone today uh, at this stop of, of our bus tour, um, but do realize that all of these, uh, all of our virtual bus tour stops will be posted. Uh, Brennan is going to share the, the link where these will be posted on our cabinet website. Um, so that if, you've, if there's a phone number that you didn't get down, a link that you needed to, to write down, perhaps a name, a program's name, a contact, something, know that, you, that you'll be able to go back and access all of these um, and, and be able to perhaps look at, some, uh, look at some of the local workforce development areas that are close to your, um, that are close to your home that, are, that may just be bordering with you. Also know that not all of our KCC services are going to be available in person right now. At, at best, they'll usually be available um, by appointment, but if not, our, our KCC centers are more than adept now at being able to uh, get those services to you in, in other ways, if that's by phone, if that's virtually, if, or if that's online. So please be sure to reach out to your local KCC center with any, um, if you have any questions or interest in some of the programs and opportunities that were spoken about today. And with that, I'm gonna turn things back over to Brennan uh, to see if we have any questions today. Yeah, so far we haven't received any, but if anyone's got anything they can type in the chat really quick, we'll try to get that answered. I'll give it a minute or so. Let's see. And again, if you if you do come up with questions after we uh, close out our, our bus stop here today, please don't hesitate to reach back out to anyone here at the cabinet or at your local KCC center with those questions. And we'll do, do our best to, to get back with you uh, with the information you've requested. All right. And with that, if we don't have anything, uh, anything that has been, needs to be answered right now, we're going to go ahead and close out this stop on our bus tour. And thank you all so much for all of your help today. Sorry, John, we actually did just get a quick oh. question about um, sharing uh, information with local high schools about FAFSA. Um, so I think that, can we go back to that slide, John? Sure can. Um, I know a lot of schools guidance counselors and things will 
have special information about the FAFSA, but um, one resource that that next slide that you just passed will work, John. Yeah. Yeah. Um, KE KHEAA outreach counselors, I know, um, have a lot of good information um, and work directly with high schoolers um, about filling out the FAFSA. So if you have specific questions, um, you can go uh, talk to them at KHEAA.com. And I believe that they've got counselors um, in counties all across the state. Yes, and, and, and be sure, that especially as, as um, schools are beginning to come back in person, we have more in-person services to have, to have your students reach out to, those, to, to their um, local guidance counselors to ask about FAFSA. They'll always have a ton of information about FAFSA there in the schools as well. All right. Well, I think that's it. I appreciate everyone joining us today. Thank you all so much. Thank you.